Welcome to the Heels on Water podcast. This is where we learn to walk on the water in our storms with the courage, confidence, and grace we were designed with. I'm your host, Dr. Let Stevens, and I am glad that you found our boat. So let's put on our heels and get ready to step out on that water. In the first episode, I told you that women were designed to display faith and courage differently than men. When women walk on the water, we can do that differently because we were originally created for a different reason and therefore designed differently. Not better, not worse, just differently. Against traditional opinion, woman is not weaker than man. Woman is differently gifted than man. To say that woman is weaker implies that man is the standard against which she should be judged. You may know that Einstein is credited with saying, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life thinking it's stupid. There are some problems with his delivery, but the point holds true. A fish is not designed to climb trees or even to survive out of the water. The fish is not weak. It's differently gifted according to its purpose. Likewise, even if we discuss birds and monkeys, which both live in trees, they're not designed the same and cannot be compared to each other. Their bodies are designed to do different things, and they serve different purposes in nature. When we allow people to judge women according to what we are not able to do, or what we can do compared to what men can do, we are doing a huge disservice. For example, Men and women were designed to bear different types of physical strain. Men are typically more muscular and designed to bear more external strains against the body. Women are designed to bear children and typically can endure more internal pain than men. Have you ever seen the videos of men who experience labor pain simulation? The women respond with comments like, that's early in the labor, or that's not even the worst of it. Whereas at the same level of stimulus, the men can't verbally respond because they're on the floor or on the couch writhing in discomfort and pain. It would be unfair to say one is weaker than the other. More correctly, we should respect that we are designed to handle different experiences. Because Adam was created first, it simply means he was first. Not better, not the standard, just first. Somebody has to be first. It's an unwritten rule of nature. Now, don't jump ahead of me. This is not a discussion about women's rights or women's lib. This is realignment. The only way to be and walk in proper alignment is to know who you are according to the designer. If a woman does not know who she is and why she is here, she will not value herself appropriately. She will not conduct herself respectfully, and she will not require respectful treatment from others. Worst of all, she will not serve the purpose for which she was designed, especially if it's as a wife, mother, and manager of a family. Women have an authentic place in God's economy, in God's kingdom. It's not about a power struggle. It's not about women's liberation. It's a recognition of where we were designed to be. It's recognition of our place in the kingdom. Until we know our rightful place, we don't know our rightful power, strength, and authority. When we don't know that, the enemy can easily disarm us and probably already has and is attacking that which we were designed to protect and defend. Okay, so just warn you now, the teacher in me is about to come out. You didn't expect a lesson this week, did you? Okay, what do you think of when you hear the word helper? What kind of positioning do you imagine that person to be in for the task at hand? When you want to know about anything, it's best to go back to the first mention of it, the original design, or the designer. Fortunately, we can do all three for women. Genesis 2.18 is where she began. Okay, I know my Bible scholars will remember that male and female were first mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, and I'm not disputing that. However, In chapter 2 is where they are first mentioned as being created on the earth. Adam was created from the dust. Check. Then, 
God conducted his own after-action review and decided that man should not be alone. Actually, he said it's not good that man should be alone. I told you last week that I reminded my husband of that every time he acted like he was going to ignore advice I gave him. He would give me the side eye first, then he would concede and agree. Adam needed a helper just right for him, so Eve came here with a purpose. She is the only one of God's creations created because of a preconceived to-do list. She had a job to do, a problem to solve. Fulfilling her purpose was necessarily built into her DNA and her design. But don't get it twisted. Eve was not created to be Adam's sidekick. Eve was created to be a strong ally for Adam. She was created to be in his corner, so to speak. The original way Eve is described in Genesis 2.18 is Azer Konegdo. We will start with Konegdo because that definition is pretty straightforward. Konegdo means to be opposite, counterpart, or alongside him. In other words, it means that women are equally and uniquely created, complementary to man. Now, the first part, Azer, has been translated as helper in English, but our common understanding of that word, helper, does not do the word Azer justice. The common connotation of helper is to be a subordinate or a sidekick. In Hebrew, Azer means strength and power. See, here's the thing. Azer is used 21 times in the Old Testament. The first two times it's used in the Bible, it describes woman, Eve. That's in Genesis 2.18 and 2.20. But the majority of cases after that, Azer is used to describe God. In no way and at no time would anyone think that God was anybody else's sidekick. So a more accurate translation of Azer Konegdo is the strong helper to come alongside. What's interesting about this word Azer is it's primarily used in military contexts, such as in Deuteronomy 33.29, Psalm 115.9, Exodus 18.4, and Ezekiel 12.14. God continually describes himself as Israel's Azer in times of conflict. If you read all the verses that use the word Azer, you would see imagery of swords, spears, shields, deliverance, and victory. Thus, when Azer is used to describe women, it's not a term of inferiority or weakness. It's quite the opposite. Just as God is our helper, Eve was Adam's helper. It's a position of strength, not of servitude. To be a woman is to be a warrior, not a servant. Woman was originally designed as a warrior for her husband, for her friends, for God. Now let that sink in for a minute. Eve was not created to be a sidekick. We've got that covered. Eve was created to be a strong balance for Adam. Women were not meant to borrow authority, power, and strength. Often and traditionally, authority, power, and strength are taught from a male perspective or a unisex perspective. If that was the case in the design, God would not have needed to create both male and female. But since he created both male and female, there is value and distinction in both. When women realize they have a rightful place, they operate differently. It's not a competition. It's a partnership by design. The true power couples in God's kingdom are the husbands who hold their place and they're not threatened by their wives, and the wives who are confident and empowered. These couples have no problem living out Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Of course, we cannot exactly know why the enemy targeted Eve. To do that, you would need to be in his head. And I don't suggest even visiting there. I used to think that the serpent approached Eve because she did not get instructions firsthand from God and so would be easiest to take off track. Now, I'm leaning toward another rationale. Just perhaps he targeted her because of her potential and her position. 
The enemy is very strategic, and because of that, he seeks to get the most bang for his buck. Remember the imagery of swords, spears, and shields, deliverance and victory associated with the term Azer? I am sure that the enemy also heard God's identifier of Eve as Azer and was familiar with the meaning. Can you think of a better strategy than to disable and dismantle the defense of an opponent? This speaks to her position of strength. Another thing is her potential. Woman is a multiplier. That's part of her role, part of how she was designed. Woman has the capability to multiply anything given to her. If a man gives her a seed, she returns a child. If she gets a little money, she returns a full meal. Give her a little happiness, she ensures the household environment is pleasant. Give her a little joy, and she produces a fruitful life for the family. I know you've heard the saying, if mama is happy, everyone is happy. If the enemy can block her positive multiplication by initiating negative multiplication, he can hinder progress and growth as God intended it and multiply the negative effects. Now go on this thought journey with me. The enemy already had experience with God's type of punishment. You remember that Lucifer was banished from heaven and had an eternal place of punishment created just for him and the angels that left heaven with him. With that fresh on his mind, the enemy aimed at the target he could get the best revenge through and that could best negatively affect God's plans. That's woman. If he had targeted and was successful with Adam, as Adam's Azer Connecto, perhaps Eve would have been able to stop Adam or just not participated, or perhaps God would have punished only man. But by targeting the woman, the multiplier of the couple, the punishment would have far-reaching repercussions. The enemy probably placed his bet that the punishment would fall on woman for her disobedience and on man, the one most responsible because he was directly told the instructions, and anyone descending from them because two wrongs cannot make a right. So here we are, down through all the generations to you and me. How do we put on our heels and walk on the waves? The first step, pun intended, is to recognize and respect the designer, God, our Heavenly Father. Second, realize who you are and how you were designed. When you know who you are, you know what to do. You've heard me say that before. On the other side of that, in step three, you take it one step at a time on one wave at a time. Learning to step on those waves is a process of growth, but honestly, don't underestimate that second step of realizing who you are and how you were designed. That takes a tremendous amount of unlearning, unloading, and undoing. And honestly, steps two and three are actually a tag team. So sis, put your heels on and focus your eyes up. Let's embrace our divine design and make the enemy regret he picked this fight. He may have won round one with Adam and Eve, but we can let him know that the buck stops here. We know who we are and we're ready to multiply victory. I've decided that I want to make the enemy say, oh no, she's up, when my feet hit the floor in the morning, don't you? Serve notice to him. The storm has nothing on you, sis. As a daughter of Eve, you're also Azer. Come on out here on the water with me, with your heels on and stepping with the strength and power from God that you were designed with. A dear sister described those heels as stylish combat boots. And she's not wrong. To the world, they just look like high heels. But now we know the superpower that comes with them, strength and power from God himself. God is just waiting for us to realize and remember who we are and what we inherited. I say to you what Christopher Robin said to Winnie the Pooh. That is my favorite cartoon character. Christopher Robin said, Always remember you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and loved 
more than you know. I'm looking forward to being out here on the water with you. So follow the Heels on Water podcast so you know when the next episode leaves the dock. And share the podcast with a woman you care about. Heels on. Eyes up. Talk to you next Tuesday.